Revenge is a dish well served cold. And chances were missed. Let's burn through that. Hi, my name's Nick. And I'm Dax. And welcome to the coal room. We're now sitting in a room. Uh, we should have a TV with a, with a blazing fire and all that type of stuff in the back. Next week. Next week. But um, yeah, welcome to the Coal Room, our YouTube rugby chat show, where we've changed things up again and it seems a little bit better that we speak a little bit loosely, a little bit more freely and... Yeah, just yeah. relax a little bit on the couch. Oh, and, I, and, I, and, and actually talk more about points from the weekend than actually just do a blanket review, which actually turned out to a better video last yeah. week than what we've previously been doing. And our biggest talking point over the weekend, and we've been looking at a lot of like the Super Sport and the News 24 articles that have been coming out. Chances being missed, or yeah. uh, the cycling team's not, not closing out enough. strongly. I'd say it's more not capitalizing on the errors of other teams. Yeah. Uh, mainly, which is, I mean, the Lions game for me was heartbreaking. It, it was confound, uh, compounded by something that we have said before. We're not good or quick enough off the defensive line. Yeah. A lot of the Reds tries were through defensive errors. Yeah. So, I think the, the Lions game, it, it's also just, a, I feel, a failure of the intro. Mm. They're really struggling without uh, Captain Fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, Warren Whiteley, and I don't think Mostert has that skill to rev the team up, come from behind. Attitude. I don't think it's necessarily revving the team up. If you if we look at how Whiteley leads, he's a passionate leader and he very and he leads from the front. But what he has a very good um, what's very good in terms of his leadership, he knows how to get the guys structurally getting into play properly. And, and I and, I'm, and I'm, what I'm trying to get at is he can get them getting their defensive line more set and more alert and that type of thing. Or on attack, he gets his guys more motivated to actually break that line and that type of thing. I also find that they, they're they really struggling with good line breakers. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ruan uh, Janssen van Rensburg, I don't know where he's been. Is he injured again? No, he was starting. Was he starting? Is it maybe perhaps a failure in terms of our uh, in terms of their distribution getting it to him so they can get it through the game line and, and yeah. breaking gaps and that type of thing? Is, is, is that something that maybe the Lions need to recalibrate and actually look at doing again? I think this year was there was disruptions this year for the Lions. Yeah. They yeah. had a, a new coach coming through the system. Oh, granted, he has been there for a while, but still it's a new mentality I find. Mm -hmm. And I think they're also feeling a bit demotivated with the little player drain that's happening at their team. Mm -hmm. Everyone following coach Johan Ackerman over to, I think it's Gloucester. Gloucester, yeah. Um, and I mean, Jakob Creel just announcing I mean, that he's, that he's going to That's a massive loss for them. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's a bit of that losing some key players, um, you know, widely being injured, not being able to mm -hmm. lead the team. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, so. And another thing that confused me a little bit, they brought in Nick Groom from overseas, from Sale, right? Yeah. He is a top-notch scrum half. Like, he's good distribution, quick to the breakdown yeah. and stuff. I mean, the first half, I think one was an intercept trial of their scrum half, the starting scrum half. Scrum half. Why didn't they start, start Groom? I mean, the guy's experience, the guy... As a good passing game, he's good with his base kicks. Why didn't they choose him to start? I think that that's confused me. I think that's mainly a tactic because Groom has literally just come to the team. His first interaction with the team was the week before they left on tour. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more, you will start, but right now we're just getting you used to our structures um, and dynamic. I think he's professional enough to... Do a basic ability, but then again, it could be that mm. the the coach is hoping that Cunha regains some form. Yeah, but Cunha, I don't think was starting this week, was he? No, he was starting. Was he starting? Yeah, he's looking. He was looking very outsourcing. If he was coming back in the starting bit, I think that was honestly a really, really bad mistake. Because a lot of the tries that were scored by the Lions to come back into the game were when Groomer on the field. Yeah, um, but I think we've hopped on enough about this game. 
Let's go to the Stormers the game. That was actually first. Yeah, uh, the Stormers games were was first, but I think the line, I think the most important thing is the Lions failed in terms of their structures to actually beat a red side that they should have on paper beat. Yeah, the Reds aren't, aren't performing this season, and that's their chance missed, and they were knocked off top spot because of it. Yeah, greatly. Stormers, yeah, I have much to say. better showing this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, the scrums were working a lot better. Um, I did find though when um, uh, Wilco was replaced, they struggled a bit. Yes, uh, Sadi did struggle a little bit. Um, it's to be expected. He's a young, yeah, he's a young tight head. He's still in the, I think the uh, Western Prom junior structures. Uh, so he's been brought into the into the uh, main team as cover until Franz Malherber is fit again, which is hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that dynamic of having France and Volker Lowe would definitely bolster up the, the Storm mm -hmm. Scrum. But um, Colisi having a better game. Yeah, definitely. Much better game from him. Um, Delende finally having a good game as well. Delende had a, had a much better game. He was a little bit better defensively this week. Um, Offensively, he was a bit more prominent. I mean, he did break a few. I mean, his first try was breaking the line and yeah. getting a clear run in. Um, he opened up some space. Had some really good. Uh, he did the really good pass to JJ Engelbrecht for his one of his first of two tries. Um, JJ Engelbrecht, though, I found was always out of position on defence, though, and yeah. that's because you can see he's not a clear winger. No, he's he's one of those. Um Utility backs that you know, they literally call them a utility back that you can play anywhere in the back line, and I find that while it's great that a player has that ability, ability. sometimes it's they get to, they play too much in one position and get used to that position, and when they get asked to swap to another position, it's yeah. a bit awkward. So I mean, when Engelbrecht was at the Bulls, he was an outside center. Yeah, and I mean, I would like to see him and Evia Fillion. Rotate that yeah. role a little bit depending on how the games are. If you feel a little bit more sound defensively, has a bit, has that uh, Jean de Jong ability of of having a good step, breaking the line that way. Engelbrecht a little bit more imposing, could be used as a as a battering ram of sorts yeah. in in open play. Um, but when the rebels sucked in the Stormers' defence. Engelbrecht got sucked in as well, which led to the Rebels being able yeah. to spread out wide. But again, I was surprised. Led to their two tries. I was surprised by the Stormers. I have to say, I did not expect them to win that game. Uh, I thought I thought we were in with the chance. I mean, the scoreline was flattering. I will say that, considering that the Rebels played a lot better in the second half. Stormers napping a little bit in that sense. I mean, they soft turnovers yeah. got gave the Rebels possession. Um, but the Rebels also weren't that fantastic either. No, I think they're coming off a, a hard loss to the Bulls. I think their mm. confidence is shaken a bit. They they had three consecutive losses in a row. Yeah. And now it's four. So I think they, their confidence is definitely lacking. Um, I was going to say something. I just completely blanked. <laughs> the refereeing of the game was also a little bit neither here nor there. Like mm. certain... certain um, Certain um, calls that he made for one team didn't translate to the other team. I know you and I had some very passionate WhatsApp conversations. We did. I mean, there was one instance where the mall instance. The mall instance where I, in the in the replay, the rebels were off, did rotate the mall, but I saw that Scarra got the ball out, so I visibly saw the ball, and he was trying to play it back. And obviously, in that position, the rebels are now offside. And then when they killed the ball, the rebels got the scrum. I mean, that for me was a bit. But see, like, I, I saw that instance slightly, slightly differently. I saw Scar is still attached to the mall. The mm -hmm. rebels player had, as according to the ref, come through the middle, and because Scar is still attached to the mall, the rebels player is fully entitled to lie on it yeah. because the mall was called. But this is this is this is the problem that a, a, lot, a lot of the News Twenty Four readers in a recent poll said. The understanding of the rules is so different from referee to referee yeah. to referee. There's no clear, concise. I mean, so that uh, uh, rugby rules in general is the only sport apparently that has open interpretation to the rules. Yeah, I think the rules definitely need a, a look at. Um, something else that the um, uh, News24 people said 
and we spoke about it last week, is the lack of crowd attendance at the stadium. Mm. The fact that the Newlands management or the Stormers management moved the game earlier in the day on a public holiday in South Africa um, to order to try and facilitate a bigger crowd, yeah. you could have walked to the stadium at half time and gotten the seat on the halfway line. Yeah. So, so yeah. I guess that's not working for them. No. Definitely not. It should have been an evening game, to be quite honest. Yeah, there might have been a bit more of a vibe. Yeah, exactly. More of a party vibe and stuff. Which brings us to the Bulls. Oh, do we have to? We have to. I mean, they... In My terms, heart broken. In terms of points scored, four tries to two... That is a huge step up. I mean, that's just... The I mean, fact Bulls that scored four tries to two against a New, 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 New Zealand team. Yeah. They let... They gave away too many soft penalties in, yeah. their own, in their own half against a side that can capitalize on that. But I also think it was a, a different strategy. And you know? mm. I think the Sharks utilized this very well. And that's and I think the Highlanders were copying the Sharks. It's just like, if you can kick at balls, mm. do it. Get the yeah. points. It doesn't matter how far behind you are. If you have the opportunity to, to get that scoreboard ticking, do it. The Bulls' strategy, on the other hand, is we're going for the try. Yeah. And I felt that, you know... I mean, there were kickable penalties yeah. that they went for the rolling wall, which didn't pan out. Yeah, so... I mean, the first two, after the first two, they should have said, well, let's start getting the scoreboard ticking with a few penalties. I mean, all the... the I think they scored one try off a set piece. The yeah. rest were... It was a penalty try? Yeah, well... And uh, then some good running tries. Yeah, the rest were actual good open play running tries. Good exception from Pollard. Yeah, very, very good interception by Pollard, who is definitely in form as a player. As, yeah. as and if he doesn't start for the Springboks, then I've got no hope for us. <laughs> but I think the Bulls are showing really pro good promise in terms of against New Zealand opposition. They beat the uh, Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. They beat the Hurricanes. Beat the Hurricanes, narrowly lost um, to the... No, who did they play with? They played the Crusaders and the Chiefs. Yes. They gave the Chiefs a scare out of hell in, mm. in um, Christ, not Christchurch, White Christ, Waikato, Waikato yeah. um, leading 21-0 at half time, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and, okay, they, I would say for the first 20 minutes against the Crusaders, they gave them a run for their money. Yeah. After that, it was just one way Crusaders. Crusaders. But I feel like that says something really good for South African rugby in general, yeah. is that we're, we're adapting, we're finally adapting five years later. <laughs> Yeah, we are adapting, and I mean, um, I don't think there's many games left against New Zealand opposition for the South African teams. I know that the Stormers will be playing the Chiefs, not this weekend, the following weekend, which will be a very, very good game. It'll be good to see if the Stormers can repeat last year where they where they beat the Chiefs at home. Tough lineup coming up for the Stormers, eh? It is. So the Bulls home this weekend, then Chiefs, and then we face the Sharks again. And then the Lions, I think. And then the Lions. So that's a, some bruising. Yeah, and then we must still play the Jaguars and the Sun Wolves. Away. Away. So, those are, so that, yeah, it's a pretty intense lineup. I think, in terms of the South African teams, the Stormers have a better chance of beating the Jaguars and the Sun Wolves away. Hopefully, with, an away, with some away wins before the end of the season. Um, hopefully, we can turn it around against the Sharks and the, and the Lions, get into the playoff berths. Hopefully, but it's at this point in well, time. Well, mathematically, I think if the Stormers lose one more game this season, they it's out. out. Done. Um, Unless the Lions lose a few more games. Or the Bulls. Or the Bulls. Um, yeah. But I think something that you sent to me was that I found very interesting was the art article discussion on Nick Mallet, mm. where he brought in the the fact that maybe we should have impartial refs. Yes. For. So for a South African New Zealand game, we should have an Australian ref. No, I mean, for, uh, there's more than yeah. enough in in the Sanzo lineup to have Australian referees for for South African New Zealand dogs. Australian refs, um, no, New Zealand refs for South African Australian dogs. Um, South African refs for the South African Tasman. refs, South African refs and New Zealand refs for the Australian derbies. Uh, South African refs, Australian refs for the New Zealand derbies, and Australian New Zealand refs for the South African derbies. That makes sense. Maybe also in terms of world rugby um, uh, interaction and all that type of thing, include 
maybe two or three of the top European reps into the mold as well. Yeah. It also what that also does is it also gives it allows the standardization. I feel from southern and northern hemisphere interpretation. Correct. If you have say your top three overseas reps come in to to a tournament like this, yeah, all the players can adapt to to northern hemisphere referees. I mean the interpretations are different, which is another big problem because you play down here is an, a set interpretation of the law. You go out there is another interpretation of the law, and you can't go. But it's world rugby. Why the heck are we playing to different rule sets in whatever hemisphere you play? Well, thankfully, world rugby did set up that task team to overhaul the rule book. Yeah, uh, um, that's all going to be quite some time before yeah. that actually happens. But going back to this, this New Zealand ref in the Bulls hide in this game, I thought there were some calls that he handled really well. Yeah, and you know, it's like every ref, you don't have a perfect game. Mm -hmm. But but Nick did touch on that. Um, the one penalty, the second last penalty. The second last penalty that got the Highlanders into the Bulls territory, and that was a counter ruck from Nizor that was textbook perfect, textbook perfect. Like every commentator, Tackle everyone Brown was Brown saying, Brown through the gate. Yeah, everyone was saying that kids, if you're watching, this is how you do it, um, and he was penalised for it. Yeah, which is that open interpretation to the law. I mean, it's, frustra it's frustrating as a viewer to watch this. Imagine how frustrating as a player it is where you've done everything right. You know, you've, got, you've rolled away, you've yep. gotten up, got through the gate, counteract brilliantly in that moment, and you penalize for it. I mean, that, I mean, that says a lot in terms of, you know what? This is the standard. Yeah. This is the interpretation. And that's what you need to follow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there, there's way too much. I'm finding generally that this season the refereeing hasn't been great. No, it's been on a decline, and I mean we've harped on on certain referees during the course of our videos. Uh, Marius van der Westen has been one who's been on the receiving end for a lot of our. But he has been sidelined a lot lately. He has, he's been, he's been, uh, I don't know if Sandor's been watching our videos, <laughs> <laughs> it would be amazing if they have, but in terms of the levels of refereeing, the top three New Zealand referee, or the top three referees in terms of what we've seen, Angus Gardner has been consistent the whole way through. I mean, he's not, he's not the most sound referee, but he's been fantastic yeah. the whole way through. Uh, Jakob Paper. He, he, has his moments, he, but he has his moments, but he, he's consistent. I mean, yeah. when you get Jackie Paper, you know what to expect in terms of Jackie Paper. And then the other referee, um, in terms of the New Zealanders, I think um, Ben Jackson is probably the most con consistent in terms yeah. of, of his refereeing. But I think, I think that's because he played. Yeah, he used to be a player. He used to play uh, like half, half, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, like... And I mean, they're not perfect. I mean, Glenn Jackson was in charge of the, the Bulls Highlanders game. And I mean, his interpretation cost the Bulls in that moment. Yeah. I mean, a heartbreaking moment. It is a heartbreaking moment. And I mean, like, hopefully by the World Cup, they'll slowly start introducing and getting things a little bit more concise, a little bit more precise. I mean, the players need to know where they, where they stand yeah. in terms of the rules. And I mean, to have go week in, week out with different referees, with different interpretations, it's, it's, it's tough. I yeah, mean, it's it, as a professional player, it's really difficult to keep doing that. There has to be a set precedent, and it has to be consistent from referee to referee. So I think uh, we should just go into this weekend's yeah. fixtures and uh, our picks for them. So the first one is an uh, well, it's going to be black versus orange. Uh, Chiefs versus Jaguars. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to do my picks while we do these. So just so the camera can see, I'm on uh, Super Brew, <laughs> and I'm going to do my picks while while we discuss these. Chiefs versus Jaguars. Okay, the Jaguars are coming off a fantastic streak at the moment. Yes, they but against Australians. No, they beat two Australian teams and then they beat the Blues this weekend. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, 
I, I think this is a no-brainer. Chiefs at home. Yeah. I think they're going to have... I mean, the Jaguars are playing well. They've adapted very much to this tour. I think for them to win four out of four would be fantastic, but Chiefs are probably going to be too good on the day. Yeah, I'm saying by 10 points. Minimum. I'm by, I'll say by seven, actually. I mean, the Jaguars have been competitive. They have been really, really good. Yeah. Uh, in open and close play, uh, I think it's going to be a close game. Okay, and then Rebels versus the Crusaders. Uh, that's kind of an easy one to call. Yeah, I'm going to say the Crusaders on this one. I don't think, I mean, as much as I'd like to say the, the Rebels can pip it at home. Crusaders closed out a good game against the Brumbies last week. Yeah. Unlucky to miss out on the on the um, on the bonus point. I think Crusaders maybe by ten points in this one. Yeah. Um, and then we've got an old blue derby, uh, Waratahs versus Blues. Uh, oh. This is in Sydney. You know what? I'm going to say the Waratahs in this one. Blues have enough. I don't say it's the players or the coaching staff. They've just been very unlucky, but. Waratahs at home, yeah. I think they have they have a sniff of beating of beating the Blues. I agree with you on that. I think point. this will be a five point game. Um, and then Hurricanes versus Lions. Oh, it's Hurricanes. It's the Hurricanes. I mean, unless it pains, the Lions. It me to say it, unless the Lions somehow break both Barrett's legs <laughs> and um, the scrum off Pernara. Yeah. No, I don't think that. I think, look. I'll be fan- it'll be fantastic if the Lions can get this to, to a close game within a losing bo- bonus point yeah. for them. Um, but Hurricanes, I think, will definitely have this one. I mean, yeah. if we're going to compare fly after fly half, Bowden Barrett is going to run circles around the Yankees. Interesting. Hmm. The South African derby is not the night fixture. That's interesting. It is. Um, Stormers versus Bulls. Okay. At Newlands. This is where you want your sweet revenge. Yeah, revenge needs to be sweet, but let's look at it this way. Bulls coming off a narrow loss against the Hurricanes. I mean, it, li- it literally was the last minute yeah. that they lost. Stormers a lot better against the Rebels. I would like... Stormers unbeaten at home, funny enough. I mean, and like really good wins at points. I mean, beating the Blues convincingly, beating the Reds, beating the Rebels. As much as I would like to say, let's keep the unbeaten streak alive, this is going to be a close one. I'm between three to five points, and it can swing either way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Bulls by three points, because that's yeah, who yeah. I am. And I would, hope, I would hopefully say Stormers by three to five points in this one. It's going to be a fantastic derby. Yeah. I think the Stormers have learned their lessons from Loftus. It's going to be a battle of the scrum, because the Bulls scrum has come leaps and bounds this season. Mm. And obviously the Stormers have a traditionally strong scrum, so... Yeah, and they tend to scrum better at home, for some odd reason. I don't know, maybe different grass. I don't know. Maybe they've got secret traction magnets under the... Possibly. Turf. Possibly. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, it will be a fantastic game. I think this is going to be a little bit more test match-like. So the teams will probably have much tighter games, but I mean, yeah. I think three to five points either which way. I'm going Stormers direction, you're going to go the Bulls direction. Yeah, I think it's definitely a game that Coach Rossi will be watching with a keen eye. He might even yeah. be there. Um, so, I'll be, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be a good game. Um, and then the final game of the weekend, the Sharks versus the Highlanders. Oh, this is going to be a humdinger. If the Sharks can pull their heads out their backsides, get their backline into the game, front up physically against the Highlanders, I think the Sharks have a very good chance of winning this game. I think so too, but at the same time, we're going to play devil's advocate and say the Highlanders are coming off this little confidence boost of having won at the last second yeah. against the Bulls, and that could be very beneficial for them. So, and I, I would really like the Sharks to win. They have been struggling a lot. I mean, they've only won three games this season. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I would like them to win. I would really like to, I would like a, a, at least a South African team to win this one. Yeah. So I'll pick the Sharks, but I'm going to say by five. Five points seems fair. Yeah. And submit. <laughs> so there we have it. There's our picks for the weekend. Um, Nick looks fairly confident in his Super Brew, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how we do. I think Nick sure. actually changed a few of our 
suggestions. <laughs> no, I just changed some margins that uh, <laughs> that I thought might have been a bit too conservative. Yeah, but thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and click the little bell icon so that we can notify you when the next video comes up. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you next week, um, and maybe we will have our fireplace going. Yeah. Sounds rad. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.